And just when we thought we were done talking about everything they announced at Worldwide Developers Conference, then this video happened. Today I'll be talking to you about all of the possibilities and the stability of Project Sidecar. Thanks to Mark Gurman, who gave us the details on that months before it came out, ended up being just exactly right, and I'll be demoing it for you today. So let's begin. <laughs> For those of you who for some reason do not know, Sidecar allows you to dock your iPad to your Mac of any kind, MacBook, iMac, as long as your iOS device is running iOS 13 and your Mac is running Mac OS Catalina. There was a lot of different requirement questions for Project Sidecar, so I thought in today's video I could go a little bit more into detail into what stars basically have to align, but there are essentially two different ways to use Sidecar. You can use it wirelessly or with a wire. A lot of you may hear that and just go, well, you can do it wirelessly, just do it wirelessly, who cares? There are, however, some down downsides to doing it wirelessly. This uses your Wi-Fi between the iPad and the MacBook to communicate to each other, kind of like how AirDrop uses Wi-Fi. So it's not streaming it to some server and then beaming it back to the iPad, as in you don't actually need to have an internet connection. All you really need to make sure you have is Wi-Fi enabled. So if you turn the Wi-Fi off on the MacBook or you turn the Wi-Fi completely off on the iPad, Sidecar will not work wirelessly. It will, however, still work with a USB-C cable, which if you have the latest generation iPad Pro or a more recent MacBook Pro, you definitely have at least one USB-C cable for charging. Plug them into each other and bam, you no longer need to have Wi-Fi to have these things connect to each other. If you're per se out in the field somewhere and there's no internet connection, you can still use them wirelessly. You just have to make sure that Wi-Fi is left on. But like I said, you don't need to be connected to a particular Wi-Fi network. As long as Wi-Fi is enabled, it will still work. Though I have to say, even though I have a pretty good Wi-Fi network at my house and everything is fairly stable, maybe it's just because it's in beta form right now between iOS 13 and Catalina, but the wireless version is quite buggy. It will glitch out on occasion, the scrolling is not very smooth, and I will see lots of artifacts forming on the display when using Sidecar as a separate display with no wires, which is why I think Apple makes it an option to use this via USB-C, because once you plug it in and use Sidecar that way, which is all configurable from the Mac, right next to the display settings, you'll see a little Sidecar option, and there's a little Connect To button, or, if you don't want to go through Sidecar and settings, your iPad Pro will automatically show up within AirPlay settings. So the same way you would connect your Mac to an Apple TV to cast your video to that over the air, you can do that same exact thing with the iPad Pro. So your Apple TV will show up and your iPad will show up now with Sidecar and you can just tap it and boom, start either using it as a separate display or using it as a mirrored display if you want to be doing something on your Mac and have the exact same thing being shown on the iPad. Now they do give you a little bit of freedom on the iPad as well. So if you want to exit Sidecar and keep on using your iPad, you can still just swipe up like normal, go about doing your normal iPad OS things, and then there will actually be a little app in the dock that has the Sidecar icon, and you'll simply tap that and it'll go back to viewing whatever you were viewing on the Mac. Within system preferences, it'll also treat your iPad display just like any other external display, so you can decide what side of the MacBook you want it on, whether you want it on the top or the bottom. And by default, they give you these little black bar options on the iPad so that you have control of the touch bar, if you want to completely move over to the iPad, and also some taskbar features on the side left column to give you some more freedoms when using Sidecar for things that the touch display may not be able to do on its own. But in my experience, I would rather have both of those off just because it looks so much more clean. In my opinion, the bezel uniformity of the iPad Pro just looks so much cleaner and so much better than a MacBook Pro standard display, which has, you know, chin down here, side bezels, and then a thick forehead on top. Mac OS just looks so clean with the curved corners like it does on the iPad Pro. So I turn off the touch bar and I turn off the task bar because I think it looks the best just as a stationary secondary display. Putting either Discord over there or different editing apps over there while I'm working on something else. The name was very appropriate. It is a sidecar, you know, it's not the main part of your computing experience because the refresh rate is going to be a lot lower. The latency will definitely be noticeable. But if you would like to use your Apple Pencil on a Mac application, sidecar is likely going to be the best way to achieve that, particularly if you use a wire because then, of course, you can keep on using your Apple Pencil with the iPad display, even though it's just showing Mac OS. Though it doesn't simply work like other display apps in the past, like Duet Display or Luna, where you could just start tapping your iPad and move around windows and the touch screen suddenly turns into a mouse. No, with Sidecar, the touch display is basically turned off unless you use an Apple Pencil, but in certain apps, they will let you use two fingers to scroll around through either Final Cut or different timelines, depending on what app you're using. But if you were hoping that, oh, perfect, I just have Mac OS on my iPad now, and I 
can use my finger to navigate everything. No, it's not that simple. You'll still need an Apple Pencil for a pointing device. And the other not so fun thing is that when using Sidecar over Wi-Fi, it will take a little bit of a hit on your Wi-Fi performance, whether it's on your iPad or your MacBook. When using Sidecar, you may see your upload and download go a little bit lower. So if uploading or live streaming is an important thing to you, Sidecar could end up affecting that, which is why I highly recommend you use it via USB-C cable. I didn't get any artifacts. I didn't get any lag, although it's still not a smooth 60 refresh rate. When just scrolling or navigating around things on the Sidecar iPad Pro, even with the cable, it's still not that buttery smooth, especially if you're used to the iPad Pro having that 120 hertz refresh rate. It's not going to be present over on the iPad. Overall, though, I'm super grateful that they added this natively to macOS because before there are apps that were kind of like it, but they weren't built in native and they definitely didn't have the same AirPlay integrated options that we have today. So I'm glad they added those in. There were also some people asking me if you could sidecar two different iPads simultaneously. And as of right now, I don't see that as an option. It appears to be just a one iPad at a time thing. If you started to try to connect to multiple different iPads simultaneously, it might confuse the Macs and the iPads simultaneously. So as for now, you can only attach one iPad as an external display. I'm sorry. Though that could end up being proven wrong before the public release actually comes out. So maybe when iPad OS and Mac OS Catalina officially launch, they'll allow you to dock multiple iPads to your MacBook, but they likely know not that many people actually have two iPads with them regularly. So it'd be kind of unrealistic to try to create a mobile triple monitor setup. Being able to have my MacBook anywhere in the house or anywhere out in town and still being able to dock it with the iPad is really, really cool. And giving a mobile two monitor setup, I think is more than what most people need, given most are expecting just to have one display when they're carrying a laptop around with them. So having two displays where you go with you is great, fantastic. The number of people that would actually take advantage of having three displays that are mobile and that they take around with them, it might not even be a problem with just outputting that much data. It might just be too much a drain on the battery life of the MacBook to not be charging and also outputting to multiple iPads simultaneously. I could see Apple saying, nah, we're not, we're not gonna let you do that quite yet. Of course, time will tell down the road. Let me know if you guys enjoy Sidecar or any other follow-up questions you have about it by following me over on Twitter or joining our Discord, and I'd love to give you more experience about it. Other than the fact that I know I didn't really do an in-depth video on Catalina, but there weren't a huge amount of changes. You know, iTunes has been broken up. Okay, we get it. But I am also grateful I did not put Catalina on my iMac Pro because we recently discovered Catalina on my MacBook Pro. Anytime we try to create a new project in Final Cut, it instantly quits which is a big problem. So very grateful I didn't put Catalina on my main machine. I would also not recommend you put the beta of Catalina on any of your primary devices. If you absolutely need to, then do it on a partition. But yes, it is quite the buggy experience right now. It's constantly sending out notifications to all of my devices that say, share Wi-Fi password with the MacBook Pro, share Wi-Fi password, and it already has the Wi-Fi password. It's just constantly setting out that single that it needs the Wi-Fi password. So there's a ton of very annoying bugs. Don't put it on your main machine. And I think that wraps it up for today's video. So thank you all for watching. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.